This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at how to apply normal maps for rendering in Arnold and also for the Maya viewport. Setting up normal maps to render correctly is not that intuitive, so let's get into it. Okay, so here I've got this low poly rock, and I'm going to apply this normal map that I created earlier, and then we can uh, see the result here in the Maya viewport. So I've already opened the hypershade. That's this thing here. If you want to open the hypershade and yours isn't open, you can come and you can click this little eyeball icon here, and it'll launch this window for you. So first, I'm just going to come over here to the search panel, and I'm going to type in Blin. And then I've got Arnold selected, so you want to select Maya. And that'll give the option to create the Blin shader. So I'm going to click that. You can also press Tab here to do the same thing to create all these nodes. So if your mouse is here and you press Tab on the keyboard, and then you just type Blin, you can do the same thing, and that's a lot quicker. So we've got our Blin shader. I'm just going to select it, and then I'm going to middle mouse drag and drop onto my rock, and you can see we got the specular highlight there, so we know the blend shader is applied. And for the Maya normal maps, it's actually really easy to apply the texture and set all the settings correctly, because you can do it through the blend shader. But in Arnold, it's super complex, and you have to do it kind of through the node editor. So basically, we're going to click on this guy, and I'm just going to open up the attribute editor by pressing Control A. It's going to launch this. And then you can come up here to bump mapping and click the checker thing. And what we want to do then is create a file node. And we want to say not use as bump. We want to go tangent space normal map. And then under the bump value, click here. And then I already know the path of my normal map, but browse to your normal map. So I'm just going to cut and paste it, hit enter. And there we go. That's it. It's just that easy. So here you can see there's the rock that I made. You know, that's what it looks like without the normal map, and that's what it looks like with the normal map. And uh, everything's correct, and the tangents and everything look good. I don't really see any errors or anything there. So that's how you do it for Maya in the viewport. Now, the problem is, if you want to render in Arnold, this setup, in fact, the blend shader, that stuff won't even work in Arnold. It won't look correct. And so what you can do is you can come up here to Renderer, and instead of Viewport 2.0, we can set it to Arnold. And it's going to bring up this little window. I'm just going to push that to the side there. And you can click Play, which is the IPR render. So click Play. Oh, sorry. Click the um, Crop here. And then you can crop basically like a part of the screen that you want to render. Because basically Arnold is a CPU renderer, so it's going to take longer to render. And so cropping a little bit is a good way to get a preview. So you can drag these handles around like this. And if you want to drag the whole thing, you click in between the handles to drag this. And when you've cropped it and this thing says, you know, pause or start. That's how you stop and start the IPR render. So when you click play, it goes black. That means inside of this little crop, this is updating in uh, kind of in progressive like render. So kind of resampling itself every time you move the camera. We can't see anything because we don't have a light. So let's create a light. Go to create. Let's go down to lights and we'll do a directional light. I'm just going to scale that up so I can select it. It's going it up. I don't think it actually does anything. So I'm just going to rotate it so we can see what we're doing. I don't know, something like this maybe. And then I'm just going to press Control A again to open up the attribute editor. And I'm going to crank the intensity to, I don't know, 4, let's say. Sure, 4.5, whatever, it doesn't matter. Close that guy down. So you can see right away the blend shader will render, but the normal map doesn't come through. And that's because Arnold doesn't understand the Maya shader setup. And so it just ignores it and it gives you this funky uh, blend shader. And then you can also move the camera here, which is cool. So see inside the little crop, we've got the IPR render happening from Arnold. So that's like the Arnold shaders and the Arnold uh, lighting scheme. And then outside of it, you just have the Maya viewport 2.0. So this is a really cool way to tune your renders in Arnold inter actively. So for the Arnold version of the shader, it's way more complex the way you have to create it. I like the Maya one because you can just kind of click through into the different boxes. So first, we need to create a standard shader. So I'm going to press tab on the keyboard and type standard. Sorry, yeah, standard surface. And the standard surface, I believe, is new to Maya 2020. I believe it's the Arnold shader that everyone should be using. It's kind of a little bit more simplified version of the Arnold shader. So I've got my standard surface. So I'm just going to middle mouse drag that onto my model. And there we go. There's the standard surface. And that looks way too bright. So I'm just going to open up the attribute editor for this guy. And yeah, it's because the color is white by default. It's kind of weird. So 
We'll darken that down to some gray value so we can see what we're doing. Sure, that looks good enough. Roughness, I don't know, maybe put it to 0.3 so it's a little bit shinier so we can see the normal map a bit better. And so the weird thing about the Arnold version of the shader is they didn't build in that workflow where you can you know, click through and apply the normal map directly through the interface or whatever. The other thing that I should mention about pressing the tab key to, to bring up what kind of shader you create and why it's better than searching here or clicking through here is because if you have Maya highlighted and you type in normal, you get that. So you actually have to click on Arnold to get the thing that we want, but it doesn't matter what you have selected here if you use tab. So I'm gonna press tab, type in normal, and we want the AI normal map. So click that guy. And we also want a AI image because we can't use the uh, one that we created for Maya up here. So I'm just gonna go back in here quickly and get my path. And then I'm gonna come down here, press tab again. And what are we looking for? Image, AI image. Okay, there we go. And attribute editor one more time. The image in here, cool. When you do normal maps in the Maya viewport or for Arnold, you should always set the color space to raw. You don't want to do the gamma correction, linear space rendering stuff because this isn't a texture. It's a special type of information. It's basically encoding the normals into a 2D um, XYZ kind of texture. And so that needs to be raw. Okay, and so now we are ready to hook everything up. So I'm going to take the out color and just left click and drag that into the input of the AI normal. And then from there, we want the out value to come out of here all the way down into normal camera. And boom, there we go. You can see it updated here because the IPR updated automatically when the shader was set up correctly. And you can see there's our normal map rendering correctly in uh, the Arnold uh, render. So it looks pretty good, but I have noticed normal maps don't seem to have the right tangents in the Arnold renderer. So it looks like pretty good, but you can see here, see how it's getting all blobby and like screwy there? It's getting all soft and like ugly. If you look at the same thing in the Maya viewport, oh, whoops, let me just duplicate this here. I'm gonna move this up so we can see up here and I'm going to duplicate this rock, move it down. And then I just need to find my material here. Where did it go? and the original blin and drop that guy on there. There we go. So now we can see them at the boat at the same time. So just move this guy up. So you can see mine is nice and crisp. And let me turn the grid off too. There's no issues there. My normal map was baked and rendered correctly with the correct tangents to render in the Maya viewport. But inside of Arnold, it gets this crappy shading error, which I think is a tangent mismatch. And I haven't figured out how to fix that because I don't know where you could bake the map to make it show up in Arnold correctly. So it's like the shader almost works, but I'm pretty sure this is like a bug or just like a flaw that they didn't choose the right tangent space to like render it or whatever. But whatever the case is, uh, this is as best as that I could get it. So um, if anybody knows how to get that correctly, yeah, let me know in the comments. I have actually logged a bug for this with Autodesk and with Arnold, and that was, I want to say, two years ago. So I don't foresee this getting fixed anytime soon. Uh, maybe, maybe everyone else should log a bug about it too, so it gets some more visibility. And that's it. Pretty cool. You can set up your normal maps here in the viewport or in the Arnold render, and you can even uh, interactively preview the Arnold render here in kind of semi-real time. One last thing you can also do is if you feel like you want to adjust the strength of your normal map for the Arnold render, you can come down into the AI normal map node and go to the attribute editor. You can actually control a couple things here. You can invert the Y, which I don't want to do because mine's already like facing the right way. And you can also change the tangent space, but uh, probably the only thing that you're going to want to do here is invert Y, or you can uh, adjust the strength, which is kind of cool. So you can like crank up the value of it. Two looks to be so too strong. So, you know, maybe like 1.5 or something if you want to just like punch it up a little bit. But you know, obviously, if you bake it at one and it, it looks good at one in the viewport, you should probably keep it at one. But you've got some flexibility there if you want to fine tune stuff a little bit without having to kind of go back into the baker. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist.
If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a groovy day.